Hey there guys, so I'm here with some last minute thoughts on this um, upcoming weekend's title fight between champion Kel Brook and undefeated challenger Errol Spence Jr. going to be fighting for Brook's IBF title. Now, a um, few people have asked me to do a, a breakdown and a prediction for this one over the past couple of weeks and I really just haven't got around to doing it. I mentioned in my last video that I've been having some technical issues with this computer so I've not really had a whole lot of... Um, resources to to make my videos over the past couple of weeks and at the same time when it comes to this um Errol Spence Kell Brook fight to me going into this fight there's a whole lot of uncertainty and what I mean by that is the outcome of this fight for me is going to depend on several things one among them is what kind of Kell Brook is going to show up for this fight you know what form is he going to be in because I really couldn't tell you. I mean, from looking at the weigh-in, and I haven't actually watched the weigh-in, I just I just looked at some photographs of it, so I haven't actually seen the footage, but from what, from looking at the weigh-in, he looks to be in very good shape, you know, he's muscular, but at the same time, he looks kind of like he did in those other fights at welterweight, where his, um, his neck looks a little bit thin, his face looks a little bit sucked in, and he just doesn't look healthy to me. I mean, I've been saying for a long time on here, that Kell Brook does not belong in the welterweight division, okay, he believes, uh, he, he belongs at least at 154 in my opinion, I really don't think that it's healthy for him to be fighting at, at 147, and to be honest, I don't think that this Errol Spence fight, this title defence was really a, a fight that Kell Brook was too keen on, I think the reason he took the fight is because he's just too proud, and he didn't want to vacate his title and give that title up after all the time it took to to become a world champion, he wants to defend it, so, but I don't think that he's too, you know, too keen on staying at welterweight for very long, and if he does win this fight, I don't know how much longer he's going to be at welterweight, I mean, he's been talking about moving up in weight for years, I mean, he's been talking about competing at 154 recently too, so, and obviously in his last fight, he fought at middleweight, and, you know, that's the concern here, because after moving up to middleweight and, and fighting Golovkin at 160, and then having to move back down to fight Errol Spence. To me, I just don't know what form Kell Brook's going to be in. And not only that, but in the Gennady Golovkin fight, Kell Brook took quite a bit of punishment. He ended up with a, a, a broken orbital bone, um, a lot of swelling, a damaged nose. So, you know, if you're going up to fight somebody who's as prolific with his punches, his power punches, as Gennady Golovkin is, then, um, you know, you're going to be taking punishment. And Kelbrook did take a lot of punishment. And I really just don't know how well he's recovered from that. I mean, it's really, really difficult to say. So going into this fight, there's so much uncertainty. Even though I have no doubt that Kelbrook, in my opinion, is the better fighter here. I think he has the better skills. He's more proven. He has the better resume. He's fought the better competition, despite what anybody says. Okay, Sean Porter is a is a way better fighter than anybody that, that Errol Spence has fought so far as a professional. Uh, Errol Spence, you know, he's fought the likes of Chris Algieri and Leonard Bundu. But those are, you know, safe fights for anyone that's a, that's a top contender at welterweight. Because, first of all, both guys were, were a lot better, I believe, at, at one... Well, at least Chris Algieri, in my opinion, was a lot better at 140 when he used to fight there. And um, as for Leonard Bundu, I mean, the guy was, what, 40 years old, 41... Uh, he was completely shut out by um, um, by Keith Thurman not that long ago, or not that long before. And uh, he was also, um, he had a very, very close back-and-forth fight against Frankie Gavin in the UK. So, uh, And, you know, when Kell Brook fought Frankie Gavin, wasn't competitive, was it? Okay, he, he just walked through Frankie Gavin in six rounds. So, clearly to me, Errol Spence is not this... Um, amazing fighter that people make him out to be because he hasn't proven himself yet I mean he might turn out to be uh, if he does beat Kell Brook and if he does do it impressively then you know that's a good start but I think that the hype that people have been giving to, to Errol Spence is just getting carried away I really do I really don't think that Errol Spence has done anything to warrant any of the hype that he's gotten I don't give a shit about sparring rumors and stuff like that I mean maybe he did beat Mayweather in sparring but He's not the first one. Let's just say that, okay? He's not the first person to, to beat Mayweather in sparring. A lot of guys have. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really pay much attention to that. I look at what these guys have done in their careers in the ring. And from what I've seen from Errol Spence, yeah, he, he hasn't put a foot wrong so far. He's looked great in his career. But he's looked great 
against the opposition that he's been in with. And, and the level of opposition he's been in with hasn't been great, okay? Um, he hasn't fought people like Sean Porter or Golovkin, has he? So, to me, we don't know how great Errol Spence is, okay? This fight will be his time to show us. Uh, can he go overseas? Can he... Can he fight Kelbrook in Kelbrook's backyard with um, thousands of screaming Sheffield fans and take that title off him, can he? Um, you know, we're about to find out. But like I said, you know, the reason why I didn't do a... Pre or one of the reasons why I didn't do a prediction is just because all that uncertainty, in my opinion, makes this one very volatile, okay? It's unpredictable. I just don't know what's going to happen because I, I honestly think if Kelbrook is, is in the best shape he can be in, if um if the weight hasn't hindered him too much and if he's you know recovered well from his injuries had the right training the right sparring right nutrition all that then he should win the fight comfortably in my opinion uh, he should he should outbox Errol Spence and win on points but um the reason I say that is because I, I haven't really seen Errol Spence hurt in a fight I think Errol Spence from what I have seen he seems to have a pretty sturdy chin uh, you know he, he he takes punches his defense isn't the best but. He seems to ride with punches pretty well, and he's a, a very, very tough and durable pressure fighter to me. So I, I don't really know if Kelbrook can stop him. It is possible, but we'll have to wait and see. But um, I do think if Kelbrook is in shape, if he's at his prime, if he's you know recovered, like I said before, then he should win the fight and win the fight convincingly, um, especially in his backyard. But you know, like I said before, Kelbrook, I just I don't think that we're gonna see. Kelbrook at his best. I really don't. I think that the weight is going to be an issue. Um, obviously, Spence and his um, spasticated American fanboys are just going to pretend like like it doesn't matter. But we know it matters. Us boxing fans, we understand that Kelbrook is squeezing himself into a division that he doesn't belong in, and uh, it's it's going to come back to bite him in the ass one day. Uh, this could very much be that fight. It really could. Um, you know, it's a difficult difficult situation because he's going in against a guy that's hungry, a guy that's younger than him, a guy that's in his prime, a guy that's uh, looking to prove himself, looking to win his first world title. You know, Kelbrook's already gone overseas and already won his world title and already proven himself. So um, perhaps Kelbrook, with all the money he's made, because I'm sure he made a lot of money in his last fight against, against Golovkin and with uh, what he's achieved in the sport, being a world champion and whatnot, I question how hungry he is when compared to a, a, a prospect slash, con or not a prospect, that's the wrong word, a, a contender like Errol Spence who is challenging for his first world title. I, I, I just question Kelbrook's desire here. I question his hunger. And I really don't know. I, I don't doubt for one second that, that Kelbrook believes he can win. I'm sure he believes that in front of his home crowd that, that he's unbeatable against a guy like Spence who isn't a world champion and hasn't really done much yet. But... It's just such a difficult one to pick, guys. I, I still favour Brook slightly, but I just don't know. I, I think that the weight issue could uh, it could make him vulnerable if he's hit to the body. It could affect his stamina. Um, you know, it, we don't know what's going to happen if he gets hit on that eye because it's all it's all well and good getting hit on the eye with with headgear on when you're sparring and and big sixteen ounce gloves and whatnot. But if you're in there with uh, ten ounce gloves and, and no head guard against the guy who hits hard like Errol Spence, uh, you know a big punch in southpaw, um, you don't know how that eye's going to react if he gets hit after having a, a broken orbital bone. So I just think that it, it just depends on so many things. Kelbrook, in my opinion, in order for him to win the fight, what he needs to do is he needs to be cautious early on because uh, he he doesn't want to get caught up in a brawl early on because Errol Spence is a guy who is very, very good in a scrap, but um, Kelbrook, to me, is, is more of a technician, you know, more of a boxer puncher, and uh, I think that Brandon, Ing uh, sorry, Dominic Ingle, who is uh, Kelbrook's trainer, he knows all about southpaws, I mean, that Ingle gym have had so many southpaws over the years, and so many switch hitters, so I'm sure that, that Brook has been getting adequate sparring for the southpaw style, I'm sure that he's been getting good tips from Ingle, and um, I'm sure he's technically prepared, but I just don't know if he's going to be physically prepared. That's the problem. So, yeah, this isn't really a prediction. This is just some final thoughts, just to let you guys know how I feel about this one. But um, I, I do think Brook is the better fighter. Errol Spence has not proven himself yet. But then again, Morat Gassiev had not proven himself yet, had he? And, and I picked him to beat Denis Lebedev, and he did beat Denis Lebedev. So, 
sometimes it isn't about experience. Sometimes um, experience can be overrated and it can be overruled by uh, things like youth and energy and desire. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this one. Um, can Kelbrook pull it off? Is, is he fit enough to pull it off? Uh, it, will Eric Spence prove himself? Will he be the guy that they say he is? I guess we'll find out tomorrow night. Let me know what you guys think anyway, and thanks for watching.